Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Casting? Here. Chambers? Here. Dahl? Here. Dunn? Here. Lindsay? Here. Steffes? Here. Sullivan? Here. Okay, energy recognitions first. So uh, I wanted to recognize AJ. AJ is part of the Belmont Special Olympics program. We have um, three area schools that are a part of the Belmont program, and it's our bowling season. So AJ bowled as a doubles team partner with one of the young men from the um, Belmont this year, and they got third at regionals, which advanced them to the state competition, which was held two weekends ago, and they came home with a gold medal, which wow. he is displaying. Wow. So he got first in his doubles division um, with his partner. So, And then we have one more tournament in December. First week in December, we participate in what's called a unified tournament. So each of our athletes is paired with a peer who, or family member who is not in Special Olympics. Um, so it's usually a friend or a family member that they bowl with, and then that's the one that they love the most. That's their favorite competition. So you want to show everybody your medal? Take your hands. business honor rolls. Our first one, we're going to do um, two of them. Military Ridge Veterinarian Service provided discount service to the Minnesota Elementary School's first time ever therapy dog, Cooper. The district is excited to have Cooper on staff and provides emotional support for our students. Also, Sleepy Valley Kennels. They generously donated the wonderful therapy dog, Cooper, for the district, and this is planning to help staff provide emotional support for all students. So, we have somebody from each. Okay. Shaker Egg Alley. Shaker Egg Alley in Mineral Point is a true center of arts. Shaker Egg Alley generously allows the use of the outdoor amphitheater for the Mineral Point Elementary School's fifth grade graduation ceremony each spring. Shaker Egg Alley also partners with the Council of Wisconsin Writers, Wisconsin People and Ideas, and Wisconsin Poet Laureate Commission through the Wisconsin Academy of Science, Arts, and Letters to offer week-long residence to their annual writing contest winners. These offer authors then visit Mineral Point schools to speak to students about the writing process and their publication. Additionally, Mineral Point is the home of many talented professional artists, and Shake Rig Alley has hosted free workshops for elementary students. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your partnership. 
somebody in the photo, please follow me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Anybody from the board receive any communications they want to bring forward? Yes. Uh, Jeff, a number of people have had the comment on the gymnasium not having a clear pathway to it go up and down. For example, a lot of the other gyms will have designated steps, and ours do not. Um, I'm wondering, just in my own mind, if we could have a painted area along the rail where people are not encouraged to sit, so to speak, and have it be a way for folks as we get older going up and down. Your wish will be granted. It's one of the things we're working on before the winter sports season oh. comes in. Now, we're actually going to be using some, like some yellow tape along the rails on, on both sides of the gym, on both sides of the bleachers to try to designate that as, a, as an area that allows for more ease and convenience getting up and down. I would like to see it go one step further, Mitch, and, and put steps in our bleachers with hand railings. I mean, you have, to, you have to travel to many schools not to find steps. Doc and I, we were up at uh, Wisconsin Heights. And you can see they had uh, dated bleachers, and then recently they put steps in, and it was very nice. And there were so many comments. Um, these these elderly people, they've been writing checks to the school all their lives supporting the school. I think a good way to pay them back to bring our gym up to to code. You can't build, you can't put bleachers in nowadays without steps. It is dangerous walking up and down in bleachers. Then another thing I noticed at some of the uh, events that they have little waste baskets periodically here and there. I think that might help the custodial staff. Um, if they're there, I don't think they'll disappear, but it might be something to consider. Granted, if it's a tournament game and you're expecting a packed house, that's different. Yeah, I understand. And I know them steps. I've always been given the reason that it will cut down on our capacity, but we're working a lawsuit away um, from having put steps in at some point. I can certainly have Roger check into what the cost would be, what what we would lose in seating, uh, and, and kind of get back to the board with, a, with some information. That night I had half a dozen people up there telling me what, what a great idea that was and how nice that was to be able to actually go to the top and sit. Yeah. I wish we had Same. some portable stands at the opposite end of the court, you know, where we had that other gym. I wish there was, I mean, that's just my personal wish. In addition to the current and I got another um, issue that I've been contacted by um, by a few people uh, directly. Um, the football game Friday night, we had to cart up. I drove up personally um, three hours and forty-five minutes to attend that football game. I know I know the team we played. They were they had a, a perfect record as we did, and I think I think it was. Completely Completely, completely ridiculous that 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 they made Mineral Point drive all the way up there that we could not have found a neutral site to play that game. And the biggest question is who makes these decisions and who's looking out for Mineral Point in decisions like this? I would like to see a response from from the executive director of the WIAA telling us what the process is and why they made Mineral Point drive three hours and forty five minutes. My understanding is only five five games total in the playoffs for football, correct? At that round. Well this um, was our this was our third one and there was there's two more games had we won. Right. Well, I understand that yeah. too. Well what I'm getting at though, Larry, is that I was like I was originally told by somebody that the number one seeds get two home games. Well so when we got to this third one I was like, yes, they're gonna finally get a neutral field. And I was Oh, no, that's not true. It's three. I have never liked WIA. I think they suck. They're supposed to work for us. So they tell us everything and they listen to nobody. Jeff, you got to remember that's taxpayer dollars that are using. You're preaching to the choir. And I think we need a formal. Who, who is, uh, who's making the decisions? I mean, who, who are they accountable to? I agree. The, the then, they, then you see them on TV and they're wondering why their participation rate is going down with student athletes. Well, maybe they have to look in the mirror. They have no competition, so they can do what they want. Well, I know. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. The, the last two years, the, the dues that school districts pay to, to belong to the WA are 
have been zero. So basically all their funding is coming off of the tournament series. So if we host the first two round playoff games that we hosted here, um, ticket money, those things get sent to the WIAA. Um, it, it's, it's similar to basketball, although travel and basketball wouldn't necessarily be as bad, but in it, the number one seed, the higher seeded team in basketball, would host through at least the regionals through the so you could potentially play at home on Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday that first week, and then they start moving it to neutral when you get up to the next level. So um, as we spoke on the phone, um, how the coaches at the seeding meeting voted. Um, there were, as you said, two teams that were undefeated. Had the coaches voted the other direction, we would have been hosting last weekend instead of having to go to Mondovi. Um, that, that decision is made through the WIA as to who gets to host and for how long or how many rounds. To find a, um, to find a neutral site, teams have to be willing to host that neutral site. We've hosted um, volleyball sectional semifinal games because we're willing to host or sometimes we have been asked to host those games by communities that are like, hey, I see you're willing to host and we're supposed to go way over here, but you're in the middle, would you be willing to do that for us? The same is true sometimes in some of the sectional semis for basketball as well. We, we put in that we're willing to host those games. Sometimes we get a game, sometimes we don't. Um, this year for wrestling, we, have, we always say well, we're willing to host wrestling sectional. This year we didn't get the sectional but we're hosting the wrestling regional. Um, and again, a lot of the money that we take in at the door does not stay in the district. We collect that money and we report out to the WI. We sold you know, 500 tickets at $5 a piece. Here's how much, you know, they sure, have their own formulas. Right. You know, we send that out. And then. Um, ne this next round is guaranteed to be in a neutral site because they want this level four played on turf. So schools that have turf um, that are willing to host, if, especially if they're not in the tournament series, um, they have to find places that are that are open. Um, we were looking at if had we won Friday night, we were looking at either going to Bigfoot, Waukesha North, those, or those are the two. Bigfoot or Waukesha. North. Okay, and, and that would have been the neutral site depending on if it was. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was a good idea there. if it, you know if if the Teams are traveling somewhat equal distances, and um, but with uh, with the record of both teams, I don't know. I, I I just don't think either either they have something against Monroe Point. It's not the first time the WIA has has really well, gave us a short shot. It was the coaches. The coaches voted on the seats, and it was a, it was a. a and I I heard that. about our friends right but to the my, south of us. A coach voted yes. against us. Like what, whatever, but shouldn't it be up to somebody else to decide that? Well, I don't think it would have been right for them to have to come to us. Oh, I three agree. And a half hours. I agree, and I'm not saying that. Just the common sense to me is, and that's the problem. WIA has never had any common no, sense. I remember quite a few years ago for a regional final basketball game between Mineral Point and Fenmore. It was a Saturday, snowing. It was not a nice day, and they had to Middleton. You tell me the common sense in that. Yeah, must have, it was horribly yeah. mm -hmm. So we'll look into that. And I want to personally thank the UW Platteville for allowing that game to be down there a couple of weeks ago. And them colleges, I think they just they just really look for opportunities to get their high schools in the area to use their facilities. What a great selling point. It is, they were, they were more than gracious. There is a cost to use that facility. So it, it, it cost us money to go down there because we were the host school. But, but you're right, it was, a, it was a great place to play. Um, you know, it worked out well for us with a win, but you talk about a fantastic football game in a great location. Either way. Yeah, either way. Exactly. But could we could we reach out to the to, to that WIA organization and get a response back? I can certainly try. 
Is there a director, or how does that operation Dave, work? Dave Anderson is the executive director. So he is the top guy at the, at the WIAA. And does he make all the decisions? Or? There's a board, a board of control. There's a board of control made up of, you have to be uh, an employee, a current employee of a school district and in an administrative capacity. So anybody that's a, a principal or superintendent has to be elected to represent school sizes and regions. Okay. Is so, it true is it true next year that they will be deciding who goes where in tournament play, Mitch? Did I did somebody tell me that? For football? Yeah. Uh, they're going to be years ago there was what was called a district plan because football teams are dropping out, co oping the number of teams available to compete against, the travel time. So they started looking at district football. So you might, if it, say we're the SWAL conference, uh, you might not be playing some of the same teams that you would have normally played for football mm -hmm. only. Um, that was voted down by the Football Coaches Association, I believe. So then they put that on, on the shelf. Um, several years passed, some more teams, you, you know, you look at Belmont dropped to eight-man football. Um, Benton, Scales Mound, and now Schellsberger are all one team for football. Sure. You know, teams are going to co-ops and tri-ops and things, so all of a sudden an eight-team league is now down to seven, is now down to six. So you play five conference games and then you have to find four non-conference games somewhere. So that's why um, Aquinas and Onalaska Luther were part of ours and Lancaster was part of our conference this year. This came out of a, um, some work, a lot of work from this area, from the, and a, a lot from the SWAL conference to try to balance out some conference, some conferences for football only so that you weren't trying to find a great deal of non-conference games and you weren't having to travel all over sure. the state. Um, the WI put a moratorium on any football only conferences for this year and now the Coaches Association kind of brought back something similar to that district plan. So next year, our conference, and I, I don't know the name, the schools off the top of my head. Do you, Matt? Uh, it'll be us, Darlington. No, it does not come now. No. Belleville. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Park, Orfordville, Parkview? I think that's, I think that's the other team that yeah. comes over. Aquinas and Luther are out. Belleville and Orfordville, Parkview are now in our be conference. In. I've got friends up in La Crosse, and they said they can figure out what happened there either. That they... That uh, that uh, Aquinas, they were down here. I think they were down between Arlington and Lancaster Mineral Point. Between the two teams up there in La Crosse, I guess it was unfair that they had to travel this far down here. And and the schools and this that was not assigned by the WI. Our conference this year was not determined by the WI only to give their stamp of approval. We reached out to all sorts of schools around the area, um, big and small, to try to alleviate the small conference numbers, the travel time, so that the district administrators and football coaches needed to sign off to uh, for us to have this conference, this current the current conference that we finished. So Aquinas and Alaska Luther <coughs> agreed to be a part of the conference for this year, knowing that in another year it was going to change. But it was we went on enrollment numbers and success factors and you know because you have Boscobel and Sellers in Boscobel is the biggest school in Swall and they played in the Six Rivers Conference and Southwestern is the smallest school in the Swall and they played in the Six Rivers but was football only and, and a lot of it is around how many kids can we get to play football the fact that you you know you have to have 11 on the field and you need you know nobody wants to send a Hundred pound freshman out there because he's the third string tackle going up against you know, a year ago somebody like Eric Heisner. You know, it's like nobody wanted to do that, and, and then people's programs start to fall apart. So that's why this year is the way it was, and <coughs> and now you know this change. They're still trying to match up schools based on enrollment. When there, sh there should be an avenue, as it was this year, if you have a a disgruntled coach from a neighboring school having the important vote to change everything, there should be an appeal process that, hey, Mitch Wainwright can go to the WIA and say, hey, let's let's take a look at this. I'm not sure that they're working on that. Well, um, there should be. 
you have, an, you have the ability to appeal the vote at that coach's meeting. And I, and I can speak from personal experience in, in basketball, you go to your seating meeting, you sit down and, and you have an opportunity to say, I believe that I am the mm -hmm. one seed or two seed. And, and you look at what's easier in basketball is a lot of the teams you have head-to-head -head competition with. Um, you know, and you've played a lot of the teams twice, so it's easy to say, you know, I have, I've beaten this team, you know. Uh, I've been able to say things like, so far, I beat Cuba City. Cuba City split with Darlington. Uh, I've beat Darlington twice. I believe, I believe I deserve a higher seed than Cuba City does. I think I should be the one seed. Coaches can vote on that. If, if I got voted as the two seed, once all the voting is done, then you come through and you can appeal your position. And you are appealing it to the other coaches in the room. I can't vote. If I was appealing to Cuba City, I can't vote and Cuba City can't vote. All the other coaches then determine, based on the information you provide in that appeal process. I know Coach Paul Skill appealed, um, and like the rest of us, disappointed that the vote went the way it did. Uh, I did have a chance to talk with him today and said, do you feel travel had an impact on your kids, on the, on the team, having to go that far? And he said, you know, we were in a position to win. I, I can't say that. I can't say that that bus ride had an impact on the outcome of the game. I, I felt we were we were in a great position to win and, and had every opportunity to get it done. You know, and again, when you have a, a great group of kids like that, it's it's tough to see that season end short of their ultimate goal. Uh, but I can certainly reach out to the WI and ask, you know, for their guidelines and and, and the outcome of the game is not the reason for the for my discussion bringing this up tonight. It's the idea that we had to take our fans three hours and three and a half hours, three hours and forty-five minutes up there when when we were unbeaten. I mean, I had a lot of people ask me that. Okay, is there anything else from the board member? As well as anybody signed up? Yes, we have Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Hey everybody, Paris Johnston. Um, I periodically come to meetings and I try to watch as many of them as I can and stay abreast of what's going on. And um, as a community member, I found myself just shocked by the vote last month to not put Andy Bush back on the school board. Um, I scratched my head about it for a long time. I read the article that Joel put out in the, in the uh, Facebook page. I read the article that Janelle put out in the Democrat Tribune. And in nowhere was there any information about who voted for who. And so I thought that was an interesting question. So I asked Joelle, and because of the open record flaw in Wisconsin, uh, she asked Mitch. I was given the information on who voted for Andy in this way. And I know the school board does a lot of public voting. Almost everything that you guys vote for outside of a closed session is recorded, which I think is the right way to do it. And I'd like to place an objection to the process of not having that be public information. I think that you're all elected officials. If you're choosing another member of your board, I think we should know who voted for who. Um, I was especially surprised that Andy didn't win as he had been a school board member for four years in good standing. I hadn't you know, read any sort of conflicts that there had been. He seems like a pretty central, middle of the road personnel. And in the two elections that he had, he won by almost 100 votes in both of them as a top vote getter. And it's just really surprising to me to see the school board make a choice to not put him back on the board. Um, I don't understand, I don't know where, where that comes from. I don't know if this is trying to get someone who is politically similar to you on the board, and no, no offense to Gary in any way, shape, or form in this situation. Um, it's just more the, just the shock of this. I've known Andy Bush for 30 years of my life, and I've never met anyone who's more interested in the quality of experience that students have in the Monroe High School. It seemed like a wonderful chance for him to try to join the administration in an accounting position where he was required to resign to apply for a job by, I believe, state law required that. And uh, so I would like to make a few statements. Um, for the record, I would like to note that Nate and Aaron and Everett voted for Andy in the first round with Jeff and Larry and Tony voting no. And then a second vote, Nate switched his vote over to Gary. Um, I, object, I voiced my objections to all of you when Tony was elected on the idea of the hat choosing. 
and not nothing, not, nothing. You know, there are four people a hat. You know, you got a twenty-five percent chance you got the hat, um, and I think that's unfortunate. And so I would ask the school board to reconsider what the policies are. I don't know if there was any debate amongst you publicly. Um, I don't know if you can have that conversation amongst school board members outside of school board meetings to decide to discuss who you're voting for. And I, I, is, is that is that allowed? So um, my understanding is that there was at least one, if not more than one, phone call that Larry called Everett and had a phone conversation trying to sway his vote. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying this is these are the information I heard. I'm just trying to have a conversation, Jeff. I just need to correct that. Sure. sure. So that's not true. <laughs> okay. Then I, I apologize, Larry. You I, I should then call U.S. Head and you can get a you can. Go to the sheriff and get my phone records. No, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy to. I'm here. Well, I'm not say that. I, I was asking a question. I asked you what the policies were, and I asked if there were phone conversations. Discussion. I think are still somewhat private. I believe that they are. And you I'm want sorry. that not to be private? I I'm asking what the rules are. Are we, are we past this, Jeff? The policy. The policy has to change. You're correct. Right. Right. I, 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 multi multiple parts and of this. Board members, I can call Aaron and I can call Dr. Lindsay. But I cannot talk to those two and another one sure. at the same time. Do we uh, we give how many, how many minutes do we give a citizen, Jeff? I mean, I think we're about there, are we? We're getting close, Larry. All right. I, I mean, is this something that you will address? The last time that it happened, there was no address. We we had this guy had this conversation with all of you after the referendum meeting in November about changing this policy. I came up to each one of the individual board Honestly, members afterwards. It's on the docket. We just haven't. We just haven't. So it. didn't that. In my question as a citizen, isn't that something you would want to resolve before you have this vote? This seems like a, a, if, you, if you know that there are objections, if you all are saying that you think there's something wrong with this process, I don't understand your process of going through this situation and not having this discussion before this happened again. Some, unfortunately, some of it is just time. Okay. Do you, can I ask the four members who did not who voted for Gary? why they voted for Gary over Andy, who had an overwhelming voter turnout. We seem to have, in, in both this and the referendum in November last year, there seemed to be a well, very... Are into a back and forth now, Jeff? Can, I'm just asking a question. I, I, I'm asking you a procedural question. You, you, hit the, you hit the nail right on the head when you stated what you stated earlier. Sure. You approached us yep. the last time. I was the one that switched my vote. Yes. Because, to me, you know... It, it, what happened happened, but I switched my vote because I didn't want to have it go down that road again. Which, yeah, maybe that's not the best so, way to do it. And which, you know, stuck in my mind, would you come into the state? And I appreciate that. And, and to say your feedback. And, and you have, and you basically had your opinion about it. And I agree. Okay, so and I agree with what you're saying. There needs to be a policy change. So and if you would get on the agenda to, to do that at some point, have if meeting. you had felt that Andy was the correct choice, which I would assume that your first vote meant that you assumed that, I have seen. Yeah. Interesting to me to watch you change your vote and not have Andy have a fifty percent chance, but to go to a zero percent chance. But would you? What would have happened had it went to? It would have gone to a hat. And, and then what would have happened? Would and you have? I, I think I would have played as well because I've told you this is, a, this is a bad policy. And and, 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 and I'm, I'm seeing nods. I'm seeing. Yeah. And I, I know Larry's exasperated with me asking these questions, but I think they're legitimate questions that need to be asked. So, but so that you can have. You, again, you answered your own question right there. I mean. If, that if was, that went, was your answer. Yeah, if it would have went, went, you know, the other way, you know, not that it's not an important thing, but we have a lot of important things that we have to deal with, and it is a time thing. And you know what? You're more than welcome to declare your candidacy. Oh, I understand. I, and, I, and, I, and I understand that. And I hope you do. I mean, and, and I, I, I understand all that. I, I, you know, as an as a citizen of this Mineral Point School District, I'm asking questions because I find there to be some problems with the process. When I have spoken with you. You have agreed that there are some problems with the process, and in this situation, we've again used a flawed process to make this decision. I don't think that's a good thing. I, I don't think it was a good thing for us to go to a referendum against the, the school, the town's vote. I don't think it was good to put a school board member on against the town's vote in the last two elections that Andy was on. I just find that problematic, and I, I, I'm happy. And, I, and I'm asking, and I appreciate your candor and your honesty in saying that. Is it possible for me to get an answer from the other three candidates, or is that asking too much? Or the other three school board members. I apologize for that. Thank you for coming, um, Parrish. Off subject, when it's a community cleanup day and we send our kids down there to the theater, I appreciate not using uh, swear language, sure. vulgar language. I appreciate that. You had one of our teachers crying. Right, because 
That was wrong. I, I, I appreciate that. This is not an interaction time. Yeah. Yeah. So so that, that's that's not right. right. I'm, I'm asking questions. No, you're, no, I, you, have, you. you have to state. You have three minutes to say what you want. Okay. It's not a question and answer. I board. Thank you. I mean, I'm thank, thank you, thank you, thank you for clarifying that. Policy. I appreciate it. And before we send our kids out to the community commission, that's a little vetting on this. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's another one of our Yeah, no, and that's, and that's good. And I, you know, I, I, I don't know all the policies, so I appreciate your time. Thank you, Jeff. I know you're a little upset, Parrish, but everything was done by the book as the board, board book says. And I'm glad. Yeah, I, okay. I, I do. And I'm asking that you change it in the future so that we don't have the situation and so the community knows how the board voted in these situations. I think that transparency is important. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's, let us put that on top of the line, please. Let's have a policy and get working on that as soon as we can. Okay, okay we're gonna move on. And if we're gonna put things on the agenda's policy, we, we need to vet these people before we send our kids out into the, the community too. If there's been a bad experience, the board needs to know about it. Can we'll the minutes. I, I can I can pass it along. That all right? That's not scheduled through me. All, all of those community things are not. All right. Right up. So we're still in charge of them kids, and they are a responsibility. Yes. Okay. What's the matter? Make motion to so move. Second. Thank you. Any comments or corrections? I will. I one more thing, Jeff. How did you know who I call and who I don't call, Pish? Larry, I told you that it was reported to me, and I sincerely apologize to you for having information that's not correct. When someone gives Good. me information. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Can you have a question, please? Um, Dahl. Uh, yes. Dunn. Yes. Lindsay. Yes. Stephas. Um, well, the one that I want to change my vote on, so we would have to amend that. We will amend it at the time. Yeah. Well, there will be an amendment then coming up maybe at the end of this meeting. Okay. So, so I abstain. Okay. Sullivan? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Basting? Yes. Okay, items for information discussion, school board election time, fine. So, <clears throat> the deadline for public notification is November 26th. Um, earliest date for circulation nomination paper is December 1st. If you are um, running, you have deadline of December 27th at 5 p.m. Deadline for incumbents to file notice of non-candidacy. If you're not. Okay. If you are not running in the April election, and that would be Member Basting, Member Dahl, and Member Sullivan, those seats are what are the seats that come up in this current in the, in the April deadline? Okay. So we have to let you know by the 27th. If you are not planning to run which is the Friday after Christmas at okay, 5 so o'clock. And I would really when do we let you know <laughs> not <laughs> having to be here the Friday <laughs> after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so when can you start letting me know that? Any time. Any time. Okay. That is the last day so to hypothetically, if I, if I don't sign that paper, I'm not automatically on the ballot. I still would have to sign candidacy papers. You still have to right. sign candidacy papers, yes. And that deadline is January 7th at 5 p.m. But the deadline gets extended if there's an incumbent who does not file either court. Okay. I don't, I, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. I just, I it's just a hypothetical. You've got seven years. 18 years, Jeff. It's long enough. It's time for somebody else to step up. Okay, budget comparison. Okay, so looking at the budget, um, a year ago at this time, we had spent a little over 27% of our budget. Um, so about a quarter, a little over a quarter of the budget at this point in time. And remember, the, the fiscal year starts July 1. And 
money is are being spent out in the summer for classroom supplies. Um, if you look at then this current year, we're slightly under 27% spent out of the budget. So we're, it's a, the budget's a little bit higher than it was a year ago, so we're, we're relatively close in, in, in how we're spending our money out throughout this, throughout this school year so far, throughout this fiscal year. So I, I would say we're in probably a similar situation and, and we're in a good financial position right now. Okay, it just are updated. Some here. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. There's my extra copies here, too. Um, so, Mitch has a. Uh, is it the. Uh, is that PowerPoint, Mitch? This is, yeah, this is what you sent me. Okay. Did I just take a couple of actual PowerPoints? Uh, so far, you um, is a phasing plan. We'll touch on that in a little bit, um, and then update floor plans so of where we're at. I did bring Kylie um, from our office as well. She's an interior designer. Um, so if you've been at a couple of the core, core, core team meetings, she's been involved as well. Uh, we do have some uh, samples that we're looking at as well, and we can be more than happy to start to share those as well. So while Mitch is kind of pulling it up, I apologize. I think I sent you the wrong. Uh, I sent you the update floor plans. Okay. Um, construction phasing. Um, so in front of you is a um, preliminary conversation about construction phasing, um, being that we're trying to occupy the building um, while, or occupy the building while we're under construction. Um, this does become um, pretty important. Uh, so what we're trying to do is uh, establish parameters for the contractors to really work within. Uh, you'll notice uh, we have the color coordinated plan here. Um, we're basically, in a nutshell, trying to start on the building addition first and work on that area come spring, and then basically have that area become occupied. Um, what that allows is us to do the addition independent of doing the renovation, and then it'll allow us to move kiddos into that area right. while we work on the existing part. It alleviates having to bring in temporary classrooms, it alleviates having to displace um, multiple grade levels, it really helps with the overall staging of the process. Um, one of the big conversations is when to um, potentially go into, um, and then, yep, sorry about that. Um, when to really go into the heavy renovation areas. So what we're looking at is some of the areas that we talked about previously that have uh, extensive demolition or removing the floor slab. Um, that is something that I think through conversations with the core team meetings, we don't feel comfortable doing while school is occupied. Um, for the first few months of that, it's going to be um, quite noisy and would be disruptive to educational experience within the building. Um, so we wanted to have a potential timeline that's appropriate. The first few months there, um, we're planning on moving the floor slab and pretty extensive work um, within there. So we're looking at starting that actually in the summer, um, so not this first summer, but actually the second summer, and then going into October. Um, it's more scope than we believe can happen over a summer time period, and that's really where that timeline comes from within there. So we can touch on that a little bit more, but uh, this is what we're looking at for a potential timeline of the entire project. Um, through some conversations, and I know nothing's been finalized yet, we've been potentially talking about um, having some options for uh, moving some kiddos maybe even out of this facility, and I think that would lend itself um, to the construction process to have more flexibility as we shift things around. Um, basically, every classroom, every space is being touched um, in some capacity, and with the amount of work within this facility, um, I think that would open up some options as well. Um, any questions on construction phasing? I guess when we talk about moving students around, I, I, 
I don't really see, what do you mean by that, I guess? So basically we're, um, we're taking, um, say in this uh, heavy dash area, um, there's eight classrooms currently in that location, and we're putting in five classrooms in that area. So we're basically displacing and moving them around to make that all happen. Um, so when we're under construction, they cannot occupy that space. So what we're planning um, is to utilize other spaces, like the library space, um, subdivide that for a certain short time period and utilize that um, for that time period while that area is being finished up. Um, so for a few critical months, those kind of displacing, and they'll shift it around. And that's continued conversations to really minimize that. Um, but I think we do want to plan for the worst and really have options there. Um, so we're doing the addition first? We're doing the addition first. Um, so the addition. We vote on it that way. Yeah, if, and that's all. This is not very much up for conversation. Summer, summer 2020, Tim, on the edition. Uh, so the edition, summer, yeah. yeah, it'll start yeah 2020. So it'll start in April and then go through this summer. Okay. And, and we completed the year for them. You, you won't have it completed in summer. No, work time no, that's a ball of 12 month right. construction. Well, you, do you plan on doing any, any work? In the in the existing part, um, so we're giving uh, options within there. Um, so the the hash area area two um, more long for either the first summer or the second summer, but we're requiring that to happen over summer time period. Oh, I see it's up here. Yep. Right. So no, this perfect. I mean, I, your reasoning makes a lot of sense. We create an extra classroom space, extra space. What I'm nervous about, Tim, is if we get into that the existing part and. You find the unknowns. We're all hoping that they're not there, but maybe they are. So either A, we run out of money and we can't do the, exi the existing part, or the um, worst, worst case scenario is the existing part, we, we find some really structural problems with it and has to be condemned, and then we're tearing it down and starting over there. It, yeah, I mean, there, there's always unknowns. Anytime we do a renovation, um, there's unknowns. I know. Um, and we try to minimize those as much as we can. However, you're, you're out, yeah, I mean, to be honest, there's still, still some unknowns, and there always will be um, within a conversation like this. Logistic? Um, from, logistic. We're, from a time frame perspective, we're covering ourselves okay. because this is a very conservative timeline. Um, what we're also doing is we'll make this part of our construction documents, which actually means that it's contractual at that point. Um, so being that it's contractual, the contractors has to meet these dates. Okay. Um, so that's why we're being conservative in these conversations, because I want to make sure I'm not excluding contractors from doing this work either. So I want to open up as much competition um, through, this com through this conversation, but yet have some parameters that um, have some meat to them. So what happens if a contractor, if you hire Larry and he's a week behind so he's a week behind then we're there's no way of making that up so they they will make it up and how they make it up is they do overtime at the, usually at their expense um, they'll start working Saturdays they'll start working overtime shifts um, to meet those dates um, if ultimately they don't meet the construction dates um, they'd be um, the default of the contract but then you're sitting with having to find somebody to replace correct. just correct so you, you don't get to that I mean, I'm nervous about doing it, doing the construction first for the yes. same reason that Larry's talking. Yes. Has anybody given any thought to checking into seeing if we could um, rent the old St. Mary's school Roger, right here? Roger and I have had that conversation, uh, and part of it will hinge on the decisions that happen here. I mean, is that is that a possibility? I mean, the school hasn't been used as a school for a number of years. We used to we used to rent it years ago yeah. Yeah. for a couple of classes and. If we can't rent that, then I mean, I don't think the church would be the, would be our problem. Is yeah. whether or not the state will prevent it. Right. Well, so we we'd, I mean, we'd have to do like asbestos testing and right. those kinds yeah, of things to make sure that it's safe. And, that it's gonna pass and right. isn't asbestos okay as long as it's sealed? Okay. It's not Usually, it is also not disturbed or open. Okay. But we can also, you know, go back to the uh, what do you call the portable classrooms. But the problem I have is, I'm, I'm with Larry and Jeff. I'm afraid that if we put this whatever that is two or three million dollar addition on and then all of a sudden we find out the foundation stuff that we don't know it's like if I was building on in my house and my foundation wasn't quite good I don't think I'd be putting on foundation uh, an addition first and then going in to fix my foundation 
And I tell you what, that's this, that's a lot of money. What is that, two or three million dollars that you're talking, at least? And then we go underneath, and all of a sudden we're like, oh crap, and we can't do this. And then we have a brand new addition there. It really has. Then we got to go back to the voters so and ask for more money. So that's where you know the accuracy of the budgeting and accuracy of this process is very important. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is with the utility connections and the mechanical work that we're doing within this portion, um, we need those systems up and running before we can tie in. When we remove that floor slab and those and the floors and the walls, there's electrical associated with that. We have to upgrade the entire service. We have to upgrade all the mechanical system, and um, that type of scope of work cannot happen over a summer time period. Um, Understand that. And so we can't demolish it, yeah. and we can't displace eight classrooms during that time period. But I don't think it's even safe. I, I don't even know how it's going to be safe and how good it's going to be when kids are there. You have all this. I've been in, you know, I've been in education all my life. Yeah. I've been in renovations. I've been in additions, and you can't teach because you got that loud equipment going on. It's right there. Plus, then you have recess, and the kids you know all the kids love big equipment. You know, you got to make sure they're not around that, and it's just, it's, it's a mess. And that's why, I, personally, my, as, as you all know, my belief is to get portable classrooms, get it done. Put the kids in portable classrooms, get it done, and put them back in school. Move all the kids, just put them all site. Yep. Say better safe than sorry, in my opinion. What it, and if that's a legitimate option, I think it's worth exploring. Um, that it would accelerate these timelines significantly. Um, How much would it take out of our budget to do something like that in terms of limiting what we can do? It, it all depends on where, what kind of portables you're talking, where you're talking from getting it from. Um, the challenge of portables is they have to meet the same life safety codes that mm -hmm. a permanent structure um, mm -hmm. grid does. Um, I've seen them run um, per classroom ten to twenty thousand dollars a month. So per classroom. Per classroom. Yeah. Okay. When's the last project? When's the last time you did a project that required portables? Um, we don't see it. Do Bar the building Bar 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 portable. Bar there was no portables in Bar really? So we were able, um, from a phasing perspective, um, in my opinion, that was actually quite a more complicated phasing project. You remember having um, rooms? There's eight rooms. You just don't see it. That's what it's let me, let me just have you clarify one more thing. The, what's being implied at this table tonight is that there's a chance that when you uncover the foundation, it will be such a worst case scenario that we will need to abort the entire plan. And I know that people have been around remodels, but to ask someone who has a degree in this and, and has looked at the cores that have been done in the foundation, given the fact that you've tried to limit the unknowns to a minimum, Give me the worst case scenario here. Let's say it's it's an open pit of nothing. <laughs> Can you fill it with well, whatever you need to fill it with I, to I just, restore the foundation within yeah. the three million, yeah. two to three million that you have budgeted? I mean, give me. Yeah. If, I, I I need to make sure that it, are we staring at a realistic worst case scenario of this foundation remodel remediation project taking up half the budget to the point where we need to rethink the entire thing. I, I don't think so. I really don't. I think um, we're planning for the worst and the worst is what we're budgeting as well. Um, I don't believe when we uncover it we're going to find anything that we can't um, fix within these timelines. Okay, um, thank you. Now, as far as, as, far as flipping the timeline, yeah. remediating the foundation first, then doing the addition, Obviously, you're you're favoring the the new addition first, so that we have a place to put the kids, and that if I'm understanding you right, it makes sense to connect the upgraded mechanical electrical if the new addition is already in place. Is that correct? Can you talk about disadvantages or added costs of flipping the timeline? So, if we were to, if there are any, I mean, there's there's always options. Um, to discuss further, um, to be able to flip that and start with the addition or the renovation portion first, um, we'd have to we'd have to feed all the utilities within the existing part of the building, and then feed out from there. Um, we would displace, and that's something that we would build you over a summertime period. Um, we would make the building one would be unoccupiable for the first semester to build up cheaply. 
Okay, one more question. It's my understanding that the water damage slash problem has never really been correct. Is that correct? It's still present, that correct? And the only true way to solve that problem is the addition. Um, the I don't know if that's fully accurate, but the addition does help to mitigate the stormwater around there. Um, getting but you'll be able to, basically, you're going to solve the problem because you're putting the addition over it, the problem. It will assist in that. Um, the other issue is... Well, which is an argument for doing... The addition first. The addition first. Yeah. Um, it, the level of unknown, I think, is at a reasonable level here. Um, with what we're what we're given, um, we're planning basically new construction in that area. Um, we're bringing in new fill. The challenge is more that the building is occupied. If this was new construction, doing this type of work would be actually pretty straightforward. The challenge is that it's an occupied building while we're doing it in the time frames that we're under. More than anything, in, in one of our meetings, didn't you share that if you if you have to put temporary power? And temporary water, and those kind of, that that would add to the total cost of the project. Yeah, the more temporary conversations, the more temporary utility setups. Um, the switchovers are not, you know, a light switch. You know, they're very complicated actually. And uh, the, if we set up a permit, if we bring water to the facility and we have to set up it twice, there's double the expense potentially for a lot of those utility setups. Um, a lot of it okay. has to, yeah. I, just, I believe that you, you, you've done your due diligence and, I mean, you've done how many scans and how many borings and so forth. I mean, you're the expert. I mean, it, we hired you to do what's best for this project, right? Exactly. Within our budget to maximize the taxpayer's money and to do it in a, a reasonable timeline. And this is what you're recommending, correct? I think it's a good solution. Okay. Good parameters. I'm interested in kind of what Tony said though, because it, it if no kids were there, no staff was there. Talking about disrupting education while it's being built. Get it done. And you wouldn't have to have 50 portables. You would if we could use I mean, I'd be interested. Rooms there. Well, I, I'm interested in something like that because the, that would I mean the problem is they, that would be such they'd be you'd not that quick, right. but. So this will so, maybe that quick. This will go from close to a two year. Right. So I yes. think it's, they yeah. so the question is what what kind of price tag do you want to put on? And I'm am not disagreeing with you, but uh, what kind of price tag do we want to put on a shorter timeline? Yeah, right. To have it done yeah, if it's within incredible. a year. And you know, there's some intangible prices like disrupting education. Are we just going to have a really disruptive year because you're building these huge things right next door? I mean, I get all that. So uh, I mean. It sounds, like the portables are, it sounds yes. like the portables are pretty costly, Yeah. but I mean, do we have, I, don't know if we have options. I mean, gosh, I'm spending a whole year on a different site. Can we roll everybody back here and just... <laughs> <laughs> would, the, would, the, would, the, would, the, would the elementary school staff even want to do such a thing? I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't even think about voting or anything without even getting comments from the staff. It would be very difficult to find a place, but it would be worth it. Do they? I mean, I've, I've seen portables and work, you know, been around those. Do they actually have restrooms and things in them now? Or because some of them I've had where they have been have to be close to the building because yeah. students have to run into the other class, the actual building in order to use the restroom and all those kinds. And that's where a lot of the costs come from. I've seen areas would work. Yeah, well, there's, there's, old, there's old old high school gyms for sale that I would imagine they would be happy to rent for a well, year. There's like eight classrooms over there. I think there's I think seven or eight. I know there's four on the and first most floor. Room, I can't remember in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and we could even, if if we had to, maybe worst worst, we could even use like. Um, I mean, wouldn't that be disruptive? I mean, trying to cram a whole. Well, you wouldn't cram a whole. You into just have the eight. You have eight classrooms. You put the eight classrooms. Yeah, so then you have to find where you're going to put the other seven. Yeah, where, is, where are they going to yeah, be? Yeah, they would all Where's recess? Yeah, there's a lot of Where's gym class? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it seems like, I mean, uh, I know that having noise going on while class is happening, I know that that is disruptive, and I know you can't put a amount of problem with that. 
Um, but, you know, with this timeline, we're basically looking at displacing kids for three months. You know, and that's, that's better than a whole year. Plus, you could move most of them into the library. I mean, it, it's not ideal. But, I mean, it's, it's, kind of okay. it's only the first level where it's the most it's all The first level. The I second see. level will be pretty much occupiable. That's really a summer kind of turnover, the, okay. the second level. Okay. It's, uh, it's really where That's we're... That's why I'm suggesting St. Mary's, because yeah. we could take the whole bunch out of the lower and right. over. Right. When do we, we have to make this decision on how how the kids are moved? Or would um, it, we, you probably need approval on this phase, this timeline first. It, so, it, you know, there's... It does the impact of how we're designing it. Um, and we're at the point where we're making kind of decisions based off this timeline. If it were to shift, there could be some potential differences. We'll sound like electrical service. When we, where we put the boilers, when we do the boilers, some of those kind of conversations. But we have a little bit of time to have this conversation yet. I, if, if there is any flexibility, I would say if we can move one or two grade levels out, that would gain a ton of flexibility to this planning because then we can utilize the existing classrooms. Um, when we have spaces like the gym up and running, we then can use the cafeteria space. We can, you know, we have all those kind of options within there um, for short time periods. Um, it's when we keep the fully, when the building is fully occupied like it is now, there's just not that many options to be able to say, hey, can you take this classroom for a semester? I guess I have a couple of questions. I know the old home back room is not being used. Is that correct, or is it being storage, or what's in that room right now? It's it's not used every hour of the day. Okay. So I mean, there is there is some possibilities. And I'm certainly not suggesting to bring students up here, but I'm thinking, you know, anything that's going to save us money from renting another place. I'm thinking the same thing, Gary. What's available up here? And I know there's going to be parents out there that we don't want our students interacting with high schoolers. Where you're going to have to just deal with it. These high school kids are not out to assault your kids. Well, especially if it's fifth graders. Right. We're, here, we're here to try and make the best possible situation. We all knew when this thing was passed that we're going to be dealing with either construction with our kids or what. Right. We can't change that. Right. That's in the referendum. It's here. Right. So I'm looking at the best options. Cheapest I, way. I, I don't think, and I'm not speaking for St. Mary's or Paul or anything like that, but I'm sure they would be very, they would negotiate a very, Nice price. Old Lutheran Church is empty. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm not looking that direction though. <laughs> I'm not looking in that corner. Okay. Of the table. So, is this something that can be explored? I mean, uh, it sounds like you would like to move a grade somewhere other than the library, right? Yeah, ideally. What does it take for us to get asbestos testing at those sites? So, uh, a good phone call. Yeah, UMC is your yeah. um, contractor. They would yeah. they'd be allowed to that for that. Is that costly? I think we should and then that forward. My, and it's my last. It's not a. It's not a point or a question to you because that it's that something completely out of your control. You look at the weather we've had the last eighteen months. You're not going to get this done in that time frame. I'm going to tell you right now, it won't happen. And that's out of your control. But it's so weather is always a factor. Yep. Um, and I don't care if they got to work weekends. There's times this year you cannot work. Here, Nate, you and I know. <laughs> Weather is always a factor. Um, You're looking at possible two year job if it don't change. Okay, so now we're looking at kids being in different places for possible two school years if things don't change. And we can't predict that. So well, this, this, is, this, 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 this is assuming winter weather. This is assuming winter weather. I'm, assuming, talking right? summer, I'm talking summer weather. This oh, assuming, I see. I'm sorry. I mean, this is assuming, you know. This addition is relatively clean. Yep. Um, it's a relatively straightforward. Um, yes, weather is always a factor. However, with this type of construction, um, people are going to I mean, you see tents tenting for winter conditions. You see these kind of conditions. Um, I guess with these overall time frames, I think they're um, conservative enough that we're going to be able to deal with it there. Um, I do, however, know that if we put a phasing plan like this, that some contractors just won't be interested in this project. And I think that's exactly why we want this phasing plan as part of it, as we want to make sure that they really understand the phasing components to these projects. Would the, uh, the contractor that will do the addition be the same one? Do you envision the same one to do the renovation? Yeah, we do it all in one, one right. You don't. You don't think and it's your possible. This question was: If you're using 
Aaron to do the, the addition, you're also going to use Aaron to do the remodel. It, Is that it, it'd be fair, yes. So, yep. Wow. Okay. Sorry. To, to do this, uh, to do this renovation, Tim. <laughs> I mean, three months is a long time. Most of it's interior work. Sure. I don't know whether still could be an issue. What kind of price tag would we add to the project if instead of putting 20 people on it, putting 40 people in there and getting it done in three months? Yeah. The, the unknown is still, um, it's the once you rip up the slab, I'd rather over, or I don't know what it says. Once we rip that out, there's still some unknowns. So if everything goes best case scenario, I think it would be realistic um, to be able to complete it. However, at this stage, um, I think adding an extra couple months in there is a very good planning. It, I mean, it is a possibility, Mitch, to delay the start of school for the elementary only for a couple of weeks. They have less time required on that. Correct. So we, we do have that in our favor. I think there's a lot of worry for nothing. I think we give Tim to go ahead, get the get the existing, the basement level done, and try to get it done in the summer of 2020. October start start the new edition. One month, two weeks into this, we're going to know what we're looking at, and then I feel more comfortable saying go ahead with the addition. So we do that in June. The addition will start in October. And Tony, I, and I understand, but they, they do it all the time. I mean, it would be no different than a... I get it. I'm on the same, I'm on the same side of this as you are. I know, I I know it's a mess. I have a real problem with it. I just, yeah. the, the challenge is to have this be occupied come fall. You get into lead time issues with the equipment. You get into uh, any hiccups, your chillers, your, your large equipment. That's where the new challenge is going to be. Is and and we're going to know that, Tim, and we, the board will have to have a contingency, and, and maybe the elementary kids will have to go, and, and I know that's going to then alter the next summer's phasing plan, but maybe the kids will have to start the 1st of October instead of the 1st of September. I, I think it, I, it's not perfect. You don't have a month built in. That that I don't. But I, I know yeah. I know Jeff. But then they may they may have to go until the middle of June. So, yeah, I just want to clarify that a little because I, I understand. two weeks maybe, but four weeks you you don't have time. For, you don't have enough time in four weeks. But. And I we've had the dis, this discussion at least twice. There I I believe there is room for the fifth grade in this building. I it would be I, tight. I, but I, I think I think we could accommodate that. Too. When I was in eighth grade, the boiler blew up in the middle school. They fit everybody into the high school. Yeah. And they're going to tell you no. Why no? They're going to tell you no. But what happened back prepared. then? They were in a situation. They had to do something. Plans were made. And it worked. Yeah. Bottom line, it it's, worked. It's, a, it's it. about sacrifice in this situation. Did you know that they have kids forever? No. First few years? No. First three months? They, we yeah. never got moved out of the old high school. Did you? No. So, yeah. so we yeah. are so we so we middle school gym. gym. Doing that is because we're taking classrooms all the time. So, what we're saying is that we're going to have a library for certain type of grade. I'm saying we're going to have a library for certain type of grade. So, some of those logistical, we're taking special ed spaces, and the one special ed space that was in the library, I think we can get over that. Have that test on the same very school for its lessons. Do they have a ballpark at all? Yeah, you have to two kids. They're pretty. I can have Roger. The testing is pretty straightforward. They're pretty. I'm just thinking out loud. To move this on, I think I think we need. I really think we need to do that test. Find out if that facility is an option, and then I think we should be back in two weeks to make a final decision on how you want to phase this. Because I don't think we should put it on too much longer. No, I agree. Let's get it done. But I think we need. It would just make it so much easier if we could take even if we took the five or six classes, and I would suggest kindergarten first, and second over to St. Mary St. Paul. But that—that that is the area of the building that 
this is where it needs to take place and would be the preschool and I mean it's current kindergarten and first grade so you could leave the preschool upstairs while this construction is going on I'm but you know, desks are still over there I think I think everything but they have caddies in there so yeah yeah I mean yeah. literally we could take the kids over I mean that's that's my suggestion how would they do like you know then you got to think of like food and everything they got a kitchen, yeah. kitchen. They got so we're gonna have multi-purpose room I just have to take it over. Just pick it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but like so there's a way. They have the convection. Yeah. So Larry, you're going to do it both at the same time. Oh, yeah. What? Is that what? Oh. Starting with them. Starting with them. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, but initially, tying them pretty much together. Yeah, right. I. Would we be able to do that before we did that? I don't know. I, I, I don't have a problem. It's all going to be tight. It's just kind of. I mean, today in today's uh, era of, of school security, um, uh, that would have to be research moving our kids off site uh, to uh, to an outdated school, to an outdated building. They just keep all the doors locked, and then there's an office on the end where people need to come in. They have to they're at the window. There. It's a great building. Mm -hmm. We're off for that. What? Okay, so. Tim, you need approval of this phase in? I, not necessarily. Um, so what we want to do is we've been talking about the last few meetings and we wanted to present it to the board um, to get a greater conversation about this. Um, I think it's an important part of the entire process. Um, to be honest, what to keep us moving forward, um, we're looking at the floor plan and the layout and some of the adjacencies that we're showing right now. Why don't you, can you finish your presentation yep. and then we can talk about yep, absolutely. Um, what to do from here? So I can uh, maybe Mitch go back to the schedule uh, that we were just on briefly. Yeah, kind of talk. So here's where we're at in our overall development. Um, this probably looks very similar to the schedule we've seen before. Um, basically, this is a more um, developed or just more detailed schedule now that we're getting a little bit closer to what we're when we're looking to bid this out. Um, so we're fine tuning our refinement. Um, we're really talking about interior finishes. Uh, last meeting we uh, talked a lot about the mechanical electrical plumbing and we're looking to release this in the last week of January um, for a bid date of 225. Um, so we have a bid walkthrough, we have a state review set up, so things are definitely uh, moving in the right direction um, as a timeline. We have some internal milestones to make sure that we get progress sets as we keep going as well. So just a more detailed <coughs> schedule of the ones that we were showing before. Um, floor plan. Um, same ones that's in front of you as well. Uh, so we're at the point where things are, um, shifts are getting quite a bit smaller. Um, we're having much more detailed conversations. Um, their last month, we really haven't made any significant changes. Okay. Um, and I think uh, everything has been um, much more focused on the more engineering aspects. Um, so the floor plan has stayed very similar, um, and we're just continuing to refine it um, itself. Um, there's been a couple of tweaks here and there um, based on conversations with the and some of those conversations. But I think by far this floor plan looks identical to the last board meeting. And then somewhere here as well. Um, here's the phasing plan that uh, they're just looking at. Is area three will be the most um, disruptive phasing plan? Mm -hmm. the the heaviest construction as far as the remodeling? Correct. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's the most extensive. Right. Area one, the building addition. Um, we do building addition all the time we build the top five. That's not a concern. Um, when we start talking about removing removing concrete floor slabs and um, undercutting and filling, like we're talking about, that's when it becomes much more sure. And Tim, do you think that if if we take area three and then the offices to the right of that, the rest, the rest of the old building, and keep the the new addition, which is to the left of it. We could use that new addition if if construction got delayed in area three. I'm just trying to. Yes, I think you'd be able to use the addition and um, and the upper level. Yep, yep. I okay. think you'd be able to. And I mean, because fundamentally we're adding square footage to the facility and we're not increasing the kids. And you get direct so access, access right through space. the front Correct. for construction equipment and the logistics. I could see that being a viable option. If we could if we could get the fifth grade up here for a month or two. 
again, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to take sacrifices yes. on everybody's part. Mm -hmm. This this whole pro project is is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I did want to um, maybe touch on some of our interior finish conversations that we've been having as well. You can definitely step back around a little bit. Um, so we've been having a lot of flooring conversations, um, we've been having public conversations, and I'll take a turn for Tyler as well. Hi everyone! <laughs> this is my first board meeting, so it feels good to be here. <laughs> so, um, this is very new to us. Um, I think we've only had about one and two meetings on some of the interior finishes, so a lot of the carpet and the flooring. Um, the staff kind of got us saw or got to see some things last meeting. Um, so we kind of break it down. We start with flooring. We kind of talk about the different areas. So as you're entering into the building, you know we we deal with snow and water and salt, and you guys use some hefty salt out there. <laughs> Um, so we need to protect our floors coming into the building and then flooring throughout the rest of the space. We have to consider, um, you know, acoustics and how teachers teach and our kids getting on the floor, our kids, you know, moving places where things are being, food is being served, um, athletic spaces and things like that. So I don't know, I don't know how much time we have, so I don't want to dive in too deep. I do have some handouts here that kind of explain different flooring we're looking at, such as carpet, carpet tiles. Um, we're looking at doing, you know, obviously mineral point is blue, so keeping some of the blue community throughout the whole space. But I'm also, it's <laughs> um, but I did show some other colors to the teachers last week um, to bring in some other fun colors as well, not just all blue. Um, but this is a carpet tile, so um, just a little difference. You were standing on a broadloom, broadloom carpet. So if something happened to this, you guys would have to like cut out a section. Whereas this is a this is um, a tile, so this is what it is, um, and it gets laid down. So if anything needs to be replaced, just one has to come up, and a new one has to fall in its place. So that's um, some carpet that we're talking about, and in different areas. And then I think you guys are used to terrazzo in your buildings, um, but we're looking at what's called an LVT product. And another thing that we're really trying to do here is uh, to have a little more warm of color palette, um, yes. have, bring some more warmth to the facility. We have some accent natural stones. We're also looking at some wood um, wood decking, bringing in natural light from above. Um, so bringing in some just warmer finishes within here as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, so then LBT, um, this, is just a, this is a flooring, this is a hard surface. This is what we'll see probably a majority of the space. Um, besides like classrooms and library spaces. Um, it's actually a really heavy, thick product, what you can see. And again, um, if something happens, just one has to come out and a new one can be replaced. And it's a multi-layered system. Um, what's nice about this is it doesn't need to be waxed. So I don't know if any of you know the PCT cleaning. PCT is you know, prevalent everywhere. That's a low upfront uh, cost, but it's a heavy uh, long-term cost because yes. it's a uh, a constant. Do you want to feel? Oh, yeah. Yes, so, how do you clean it? Do you vacuum it or do you wash it? No, you wash you it. Wash um, the maintenance okay. crew just needs to get it's like a special scrubber that they make for it, and they'll just use like a, um, a cleaner and use their machines. They can mop it, um, they can sweep it. Um, it's a pretty great product. So, um, if you this is they, this also can be a loose lay, we don't do loose lay and heavy commercial, um, but it can literally just be laid down, it doesn't have to have a glue application. And everything that we're showing is really sustainable. Um, things can be recycled back into themselves. A lot of these are recycled content or recycled product. Um, and a lot of the carpet companies now offer where they'll take your old carpet and recycle it for you. So um, it comes in, yeah, feel it. Um, comes in a whole bunch of different finishes, different colors, things like that. Um, I think the only thing different between, I hope I brought it, but yes, walk-off carpet is what goes in the entryway. So you might want to feel this. It has some of that grit. It has water absorption properties. What's the mechanism for cleaning this thing? Sorry, what was that? How do they clean this thing? Carpet is cleaned with a shampooer um, every, you know, once a year, vacuumed. Um, and what's great about carpet Nowadays, this technology is such so amazing and how carpet is produced. So um, it won't stain as easy. The fibers can't hold um, hold stains like they used to, or like how like you know this carpet would hold on to that. Um, usually, if that's spot clean within 24 hours, the stain will come out. So 
So would that square that you're holding there, Everett, we've kind of recreated that with the carpets that we have in this building right now, with the Berber and in the main office. If yes. you come in the main office in the high school, you'll notice that that carpet in front of Janet's desk is a little bit different than the rest of the hallway. And it's the same principle that it's designed to collect more dirt, take that water and hold on to it and get rid of it a little bit better than just the standard carpet. It's also our goal to extend that, so it's called walk-off. We like to extend it as far as we can out of the vestibule because the longer run of that material, the better you're going to protect and make this material last. Um, it's going to take more off the foot the longer run it is. So, What's the average life of some of this stuff? So there's a life cycle cost uh, chart. I think that's that's actually, so this is a really basic comparison of different flooring types um, yes. as long as the useful product life. Um, so what this is is typically the warranty period and usually the product will last the warranty period. Yeah, so warranty on um, LVT and carpet is between 10 and 15 years. So we kind of like to say that the product should ugly out before it wears out. Mm -hmm. um, again, the beauty though of the tile system is that it Carpet, if one is really bad, you just need to take that one out and shampoo that one. Or if you need to replace it, then you're not replacing the whole floor. Um, but walk is there much of a color discrepancy when you replace a segment? No, usually um, the, the, the way the technology and the wear layer on top of these and the dye lots, all the, all the colored is like a digital print. So we're not really dealing with dye lot issues. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that we see is it does have some UV protectants on it, but if it's sitting in a majority of sunlight, we might see a discrepancy there. Um, but not like how we used to, especially with VCT and other products such as that. Um, the only thing that I would say is that the this is probably going to have um, the less life because of just the wear and tear it's going to take. And especially in the heavy traffic, you'll start to see maybe your traffic flow pattern. Um, not necessarily in, like wearing down the product, just it's going to get gross. I mean, we're, we're scraping our feet on this and the salt is eating at it. So that, but that is the purpose of it is to just, so we'll probably get maybe five, six years out of something like this versus the 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any other questions for me off the bat? I don't want to take up too much time. Our next meeting um, is actually with the elementary staff. We're going to be yes. showing us some more three-dimensional images as well as uh, starting to finalize some of the selections of the flooring options of the color schemes, um, all of these spaces as well. Yeah, and I do have, you guys can grab if you want, but this is just what we've been showing at the last meeting because this explains all the different floor, and then this we talked a little bit about color psychology. So we do have a rhyme and a reason why we choose some colors versus Red just, copy. yeah. <laughs> Just be not just the blue, even though we love the blue, it's great to work with. So. What are you going to say? We love the blue. <laughs> we do love the blue. I have to say, so some of the past schools have been red and orange. Who those are hard colors to work with. <laughs> so. Um, to be honest with you, I, I walk into a carpet store and it, it all looks the same to me. <laughs> I know that gives, I, you know, I have to kind of joke because I'm like, oh, you gentlemen probably don't want to hear me talk about color but I could. I just asked him yeah. that you put something in there that's going to look nice. Oh, yes, yeah, so we will make this space, look, and our goal is to make this space feel not only elementary, but also community. I mean, not just elementary students are entering this building every day. We have staff, we have you guys as, you know, community members, teachers, <coughs> things like that. So, um, and you, may, you may have told us the, the classrooms will be carpet. So, we're looking at a probably accommodation. <laughs> like a yeah. third? A third of hard surface, and then the, the two thirds carpet. In each classroom. Yep. Yes. So as you walk in, uh, we have a sink, and that'll be a hard surface um, right around the sink, and that'll also be extended in the corridor of the hallway. Peace. And then as you go further into the oh, classroom, sorry. it'll be carpet. Okay. Hall so hallways then will be, I don't think they do. We're proposing LVT. I'll take a set to it. Yeah. Is there a final building? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed you. I Yes, we're all class one right in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only thing that we will be a little bit different will be the pre-K and the kindergarten. They kind of agreed on a different product. Um, it's called Kinetics. And this, this stuff is amazing. Mm, it's a hybrid between carpet and water surface. So it feels a little different, but um, they've done a lot of tests on it. And actually, you can leave. They've left motor oil, nail polish, and it just pools on the top. It's, so if you like check your water right now and just dump a little bit, it doesn't, yeah, I mean, it won't adore. 
it'll just, you could literally just move it in this way. Um, it can be sanitized. Um, I think they were talking, Roger was letting us know that there's sometimes some, um, <laughs> some sanitary thing, accidents, thank you, that happen in those grade levels. So it can be sanitized. It's completely 100% recycled back into, it, into itself. Um, so it's, it's quite an amazing yeah. product. Just putting the right product in the right location is yes. really what it comes down to yes. while giving it still less of an institutional feel and more of a whole lot. And yes. Flooring's technology is evolved and changed. It's amazing. Absolutely. And this this is some of the sure. the best on the market. Yes. You get what you pay for. And you know when we budget this stuff, you, you definitely sure. put your money with Maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, good life cycle costs with it. Um, these are very much on that bill. They will hold up. Okay. Yes, and um, we we don't pull anything that we know that it, you know we make sure everything lasts. Everything has great um, you know years of you know we use all the companies that have been around for years and constantly growing, constantly trying to reach those you know cert certifications for buildings and things like that. So and that cert free. And yeah. Okay. To You're a certain point, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yes. You're aware of timelines. I mean, uh, cement may not be fully cured when you were putting this stuff down, mm -hmm. and there's we're well, we're having problems in this building, of course. Yeah, moisture mitigation is a real conversation, okay. especially when we accelerate timelines. Mm -hmm. um, what we typically do is when we do accelerate timelines, we plan for moisture mitigation. It's basically a top coat to put the concrete to seal it at that point, and then you can apply the adhesives down. Because in general, all adhesives go into a water base. They aren't as good as the oil-based adhesives that we used to have, and that's where uh, these timelines, when they do get compressed, become a little bit more of an issue. Yeah. We're also using a carpet that, for that reason, um, it's an open cell back, so it's not a vinyl hard back like you'll see on the laptop. So it breathes. Mm -hmm. it, nothing can come through the top, but everything can come out the, out the back. So um, if there is any moisture mm -hmm. issues, you won't <coughs> have any issues with your carpet starting to come up or rip up. It'll just breathe through. So it's pretty cool technology. And Tim, you would say our timeline that you're proposing is conservative, not compressed. Uh, correct. This current stage, it's conservative for this level of construction. Okay. Yes. My other question with allergies is just off-gassing new materials. Mm -hmm. I know that. I mean, ha, has that been an issue with other new school projects that kids so, are getting sick or complaining of? The great thing is, um, and owners and architects and everybody else have barely been pushing the industry to limit yeah. the off-gassing and really limit the VOC um, content of not only these products, but really all products. Um, as mentioned, the adhesives, that was a direct result of those conversations. So they're going to water-based adhesives. Um, to be honest, they aren't as good at adhesives, but they're better in the VOC. Yeah, okay. and the products, all these products here, is like I said, they want to meet their cert certifications. They want to be put in these buildings that are going for their lead, um, and their green guard, and all these big names. So um, actually, these products don't, they, they vouch there's no VOC off-gassing, because they want to be in those hospital clinics that are going for those huge certifications. So um, it comes down to the adhesive. So. But no, that is a very, um, very good real conversation. Um, it's getting better. It's not perfect, but it is getting going in the right direction. Yes. So is there any other questions while I'm here? So again, we're in very early stages. Um, next meeting is probably our next biggest finished meeting um, with staff and with the core team. So um, we're all just kind of starting to dive in on these finishes. So. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you guys for having me. So. Okay. So, so is that it? That's, that's it? Yeah, unless there's any other questions or comments, or I'm happy to entertain some of the So, is our plan of action to contact St. Mary's and see if that's an occupiable space? And Wow. Sorry, sorry. A few, yeah. a few different options, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if it's a computer. I, Tim, I think the board would feel better knowing with a little more solid understanding of what our what our plans are to put these kids during these construction under in occupied spaces. You know, it especially if, if I mean I know plan A is to put some of them in the the new library, yep. right? But you still are looking for maybe another grade to go someplace. So this plan, as it presented, we wouldn't have to displace anybody from this facility. You would not. We would be able to capture all that. So this plan was assuming that 
there would be no great displacement offsite. Um, That's the key term, offsite. Right. Yeah. Some of those kids might be in the library or in the gymnasium. Gotcha. They would not be in that classroom. Especially for the, the three month potential library yes. there. Okay, so this your current under your current proposal, the kids yeah. would move to the new addition, mainly in the library, Correct. maybe some spaces around in the gym area. Okay. And you were gonna wall them off and Yeah, I'd be a temporary type of setup. Okay. Those type of periods. And did okay. you also was it this this phasing you said some contractors are not gonna be interested in? I think it will um, make sure that they're capable of achieving this type of scope with their kind of workload. Um, so we're going to get a table this thing? Jeff, could I, or we could I talk to you just since you guys are on this? I'm not sure if all of you checked your email, but since you're discussing this, and Tim, I didn't include you on the email, so I wanted to throw it out to you. Um, Morgan and Laura approached me last week. Um, and they're extremely thankful that you've considered moving the pre-K and EC classrooms downstairs. But under the current projection, we're moving the two bathrooms from that shared joint area down to one bathroom and one bathroom with an external with an external entry. Um, and they're concerned with them, they still only have one bathroom between the two of them. So they had put together an email and I shared it out with Mitch and all of the board members basically trying to to not move the two bathroom configuration um, in what is now the current kindergarten classroom, which will be the EC 4K classroom. Obviously, they know they might want to update some finishes or whatnot, but they feel the need to have two bathrooms accessible for their two classrooms. Um, the morning section between the two of them has about 20 students, the afternoon has about 30. And in the morning alone, there are probably four or five working on toilet training at this time. So if they're toilet training with that student, that takes that bathroom away for all of the rest of the students to be able to use. And then they would have to leave the room, go around the corner out of eyesight, um, which just didn't seem very feasible for a four-year-old. Um, to work well in their situation. So they just asked me to make sure that I say that to all of you again, putting in that request that um, they're under the understanding that it was changed to an external door to give an individual bathroom access in the building, but there are individual bathrooms still by the office building that if there were properly signage, in, other students could use and or adults could use and visitors could use so and i did hear that feedback as yeah well. yeah um, they just knew that you guys were possibly voting on things tonight and so they wanted to they asked if i would share make sure that everybody was aware of what their concern with the change in the bathroom configuration was so where we're looking at is uh in the current pre-k rooms there's two restrooms within there um or in the current L kindergarten room yeah, there's yeah. two in there Currently, the pre-K has one restroom that they share between two rooms um, within there. Uh, because we're converting the kindergarten to a pre-K room, um, we also want to have kindergarten have access to restrooms. So currently, kindergarten has two restrooms within that room. Um, so that hallway access is actually for the kindergartners to have a shared single-use restroom. And I think part of it now is, you know, if you're upstairs in the pre-K room, the bathroom's about 25 feet straight out of the room where now they would be going out of the room, down the hallway, and around the corner, and there's not that direct eyesight anymore to send a 4K student. Um, and I'm just, if we were standing outside the pre-K room all morning long, that bathroom is being used a, a good chunk of the day by individual students um, who either need assistance with toileting or are toilet training still and not fully um, not fully capable of doing it independently. So it's just, I think they're concerned with one bathroom isn't going to be enough, and then they're gonna to have to figure out how to get 4K students to a bathroom that they can't Tim, see. is it possible or within code to have a door to the hallway and also a door from the pre-K pre room? It, it is. Um, privacy becomes a little more of a concern. Um, right, you have to have one locked or both yep. locked. So you have to make sure like that, that Logistically, it tends not to work all that well. From a code standpoint, it, it's doable. Um, so we had, we're planning two restrooms in that location, one for the kindergarten, one for um, pre-K. Um, we can definitely make adjustments within there. Um, we're open to feedback. I can also say pre-K rooms sharing one restroom is very common. Um, it, in new construction, if we were to design this, we'd be designing one restroom in there. But 
And the, it's, they also ask for the ability to have changing. Okay. And, and if the two bathrooms were left as is, there would not be an opportunity to put that in. Is that correct? Correct. So part of the challenge is if we touch those restrooms, they're not handicap accessible right now. So they're smaller. Um, so we have to enlarge those restrooms if we end up touching them, which we are. Um, so that's where we're capturing a little more space within there. Um, we're making them a little bit oversized, um, actually from what we are required to put them in for ADA reasons. Um, so they're just changing space within the restroom as well um, within one of those rooms. So they're good size restrooms. How many square feet do you need per restroom? Does that say 120? Yeah, you need, no, that's the big number. Okay, um, that's there, you need a five foot, uh, five foot train radius. Um, could you just, if they want that extra bathroom, could you bump the walls out on both sides and so are those new walls anyway? Those are new walls. But could you just bump them out and say, okay, you want another bathroom? Well, we're going to take some square footage out of your bathroom. Um, we can add another restroom. I can also, you know, I'm a little concerned that if we start adding a lot of restrooms, then there's an associated cost with each restroom. Yeah. Um, so that becomes more of a cost conversation. But. The problem I have is we already have two that we're using. And when we're modeling, we think we'll keep on adding more facilities, not take away facilities. So, and I know as a teacher, I know that two bathrooms for classes of 20 to 25 kindergartners, they're used. I mean, one bathroom I don't believe is sufficient. But the bathroom is right here, Tony. But I know where the bathroom is. Yeah, for the kindergarten. So. But, it, but it, it's still, I, I think the kindergarten classrooms should have two bathrooms. They got What's wrong with that bathroom right there or right there? I know, but there's not two bathrooms. There's one, right? Oh, boys You're saying girls. stall? Boys and girls. There's two bathrooms? No. You're on the wrong. You're the wrong one. Kindergarten, there's boys and girls. Right. And then there's, this is the one they're talking about. Right. For the kindergarten process. It opens up to. Right. So there's going to be. This so you're going to have, you have two rooms here, right? Yeah. And you're only going to have one bathroom for yeah. the pre-K, and then the kindergarten have to come over here to use this. Angela, currently, I just don't think that. Yeah. Currently, the kindergarten students don't use those. As far as I know, and I, I, I so Miss McDonald's room is the kindergarten room that's not attached. Her classroom goes down to the communal bathroom or whatever it's called. Yeah. I would have to double check with Mrs. McGuire and Ms. Beinborn, but from what I have seen, their students don't use the bathrooms between their two bedrooms. Or between their two bathrooms, they go to the to the large to the main bathroom. one. Okay. You know, I mean, I was in Ms. Beinborn's room the other day, and the kids signed out of that bathroom and they walk out to go to the main bathroom. They don't. I, I'm sure at some times they might, but on a regular basis, I don't believe the kindergarten uses those two bathrooms right now. So then my question would be, do they really need access to an individual one when they're already used to going around the corner to the main bathroom? But but I would say that I, I think we should clarify with Ms. Byborn and Ms. McGuire, because I'm not in their room 100% right, of the time. Right. But from what I have seen, they do not use them. They use, they use the main bathrooms. Yep. They need to make sure that they get yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And next, so are we going to table this vote? Are we going to vote? Is there going to be a motion? Um, it's up to you guys. I, 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 I think we ought to give Tim at least a couple of weeks to. I mean, the options before us would that be the same options to bring back, or can you go back, nail it down, and say this is exactly what we need to do? So, if we're not going to do this, we got to go off site, or we got to get portables. Um, I don't think the layout will really have a direct impact on the phasing. Okay. Um, the, the conversations about um, phasing, I think we can still accomplish. Um, it won't have a significant impact on the layout. If that makes sense. Yeah. And even the conversations with restaurants, those are fine tuning conversations. Yeah. Those aren't. Oh, right. Actually, this is just true. This is just Well, I would favor having the curve right. off site this and Tony. getting this the worst is, problem taken This is only to basically approve this part. This is to yeah. approve the phase. This is just the plan. Just plan. Just plan. Because we plan. just want. If we, plan, if we approve this, then they're going to assume that that's going to be an issue first. No, the floor plan. Floor it's plan. just plan. really the layout. Um, it's just layout only. Layout only, not the phasing, not. Specify that. 
We're right. still we're still writing checks, so we can stop writing a check if we have to. So, so this is just to improve the plan as we want like to the rooms and everything that we have here, so that they can start moving forward. But now we also need to do a little more legwork and find out. If and then we're going to approve how we want them to proceed at the next the next ten meeting. December. Is that soon enough? Yeah, I think as long as I have a couple level with the direction we're showing, um, to be honest, you know, we don't need necessarily formal approval. I just want to make sure we're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just an idea, Tim, and I don't know if it's possible or not, but the existing um, gymnasium, I know we use it at lunch, um, lunchroom if I had, the kids could take their lunches back to the classrooms and eat. Um, Fiat and it's, I mean, could, could we skip Fiat for a couple of months if we had to to make uh, three, four <laughs> classrooms? Uh, yeah, kids no, kids 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 I mean, under under yeah, the title, they give it to you. Well, I think so. I don't think they give it to you. No, I'm serious. Their their statute for PPE is very specific. Three times, thirty minutes a week. I just have no amount of time. But you could try it. I mean, I I simply don't know. But well, what other alternative? I mean, there could be an alternative for that too, as far as I mean, nice days in the fall at Tom. Well, they go outside. Yeah, they right. go outside, and I mean, you could have you know you could have the teachers teach it, you know, but then you don't need the PE teacher there for some time. But it has to be under the direction of him. Correct. And somebody certified with a fire right. background right. has to be the one preparing the lessons. But the winter time, we're not just an idea. Just an idea. I'm just giving you the thing because I doubt they approve a way for that. Okay, does somebody want to make a motion to uh, approve the plan? So we're approving the plan, but not the phase. Correct. I, I yes. think I th I'll make a motion to approve the plan with one exception to try to resolve that kindergarten bathroom issue. But I, I think the plan should be approved. Second. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Let's call a question, Angie. Lindsay? Yes. Stephas? Yes. Sullivan? Yeah. Chambers? Yes. Dahl? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Approval of budget amendments. amendments. Let's move on. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this this is the I had referenced Wolfer as uh, accounting practices, accounting codes. So this these budget amendments um, are basically a requirement due to the change in Wolfer. Um, if you look at the district maintenance on the top is ten e eight. 861 320 and they're saying you can't have it in 320 so you have to have it in 10 e 861 324 that's the DPI the Wolfer codes telling you this is now the code you have to use for that fund yes so basically the dollar amounts are the same it's a, it's the same dollar amount the money is aren't moving from Peter to pay Paul or anything like that, it's staying in the same locations. It just has to be coded according to what the DPI is. I'll move to approve these uh, second amendments. Any other comments? Call a question, please. Dunn? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Stephens? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Dahl? Yep. Bastion? Yes. Okay, we're going to move three after our closed session. Um, let's move into business services, credit card, and approval of the bills. So I carry make a motion for both. I move that we approve the credit card statement on activity and the approval of bills. Thank you. Second that. Uh, questions? Comments? Uh, Dr. Dunn, the points have been redeemed. It will show up in, or sorry, Dr. Lindsay, not Dr. Mm -hmm. yeah. You moved. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lindsay, the points have been redeemed. It will show up on the December bill. Okay. okay. You should take that as a real compliment, Doc. He's yeah, 25 years. Well, here. I noticed they were even higher. One thing, like 250 some points. It was like, wow. Okay. Any questions? 
Final question, please. Dahl? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Steffes? Yep. Sullivan? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Fasting? Abstain. Um, okay. We have lost the move into closed session. We're going to talk about um, criminal know, prevention. And there may be one personal um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just sorry, I'm trying to blank. Um, the reason I want to change my vote. Yeah, yeah it's because you're going to probably bring up a name, so we're going to move that into closed session. I move that we move into closed session. Thank you. Second. Okay, hold on. So we're, we're talking about a sensitive. We're talking about safety, and then we're talking about a confidential person related to the change vote in number three. Yes. Okay. Let's call the question, please. Dahl. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Lindsay. Yes. Stephens. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Chambers. Yes. Bastin. Yes. 